Daniel Lickers, and welcome to Book 101. Book 101 is all about the book that I read for the last 40 years, and today I have my special guest, no other than Miss Jacqueline Watson. Hello, Miss Watson. How are you? I am excellent. Thank you for asking. How are you? Oh, summer, summer, summer. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy the summer while <laughs> still here. <laughs> That's true. That's true. And today, let's talk about the book that you read. And So, uh, uh, I had read this book. It's called The Seven Level of Communication by Michael J. Mayer. Or... Mm-hmm. And yeah, so that's the book. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, of course, what it says it is. It's about uh, building relationships on referrals and, you know, looking at ways to pay it forward. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it starts with this guy getting invited to an event. Um, and the event uh, is to sign up for coaching. And it's a fictional story that he tells in order to, um, you know, um, share his thoughts. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And the book is, you know, interesting, you know, um, based on, you know, doing a lot of uh, what, what I do is real estate. I mean, a lot of realtors do look for coaching. And, you know, this is one way um, some of the coaches operate, right? So they'll, um, uh, they have some, some steps and some approaches that they uh, take and this book is um, interesting. It does kind of go into uh, the different levels of communication. They talk about ge- generosity. They talk about vulnerability. They talk about affirmations, appreciation, respect, active listening, and empathy. And these are all good attributes. Uh, yeah, good things to you know have um, be mindful of when you're having a conversation. Uh, with uh, with people, but the most important thing that I actually, um, you know, took away from this book was um, this generosity generation. What they call a generosity generation, and um, it's about making things better for other people without expecting anything in return. Yeah. And you know that is important, I think, these days because. Sometimes not everyone does things without expecting everything, anything in return. And, um, but the generosity generation is um, definitely, you know, uh, trying to um, do stuff for other people without expecting them to do anything in return for you. And if you, they do something in return for you, it's great. But um, it's about making a difference in the world. And of course, it has to start with some person, right? Uh, let's give a background to Mr. Michael Mayer. It yes. says that Michael Mayer is one of the hottest speaker in the country, formerly known as a North America's most referred real estate professional. Wow. Is, is this your mentor, Miss Watson? <laughs> He's not, he's not, but uh, <laughs> he's okay. not, but yeah, it's just a book I read, you know, um, and I do believe in giving back a lot. I do believe in, uh, like in my own practice, right? Um, mm-hmm. I believe that, you know, my clients, I do a lot of uh, word of mouth and a lot of my clients come from referrals that other people give and, you know, Referrals are like, you know, the most important thing that someone can give you, right? It's, it's, it's social proof. It's saying that, hey, I worked with her and I like the way she works. And so that makes a big difference. But I also treat my clients like gold because I feel like without them, there's no me, right? So, yes. um, so it's about, you know, finding a way to um, give back and and on my Instagram channel as well. What I do is I do a, a Instagram live, mm. and I also um, promote other businesses. Right, like it doesn't have to be a small business. It could be a small business, could be a large business. It's yes. about you know creating a community and supporting each other. Right, 
And yeah. I don't expect anything in return from them. I'm not doing it to get anything from them. Um, but it's all about supporting each other. Yes, true. And the word of mouth is the number one form of advertising. It's like yes. you're not paying anything. Oh, I'm doing right. my best and people will like add in your good words. So the book all about Miss Watson. So it's really about finding, um, well, they talk about seven you know, levels of communication, take you to each step. But it's really about, you know, finding your way to do something for other people without getting anything in return, right? So that's mm -hmm. kind of one of the things. That's the seventh level of communication, which is creating this this community that you can give to um, and getting other people to join that community and also give, but without expecting anything in return. So it's like a pay it forward, right? Yes, that'd be awesome. So if you want to rate the book one to ten, where is it? Um, eight. Um, I wouldn't say a ten. There was a couple of things, you know, obviously, uh, not not enough to make it a ten. Okay. Definitely a eight. Yeah, it's just okay. you know I would recommend a strong read on it. Never. Okay, people, uh, Miss Watson recommended the book, The Seven Level of Communication by Michael Mayer, and definitely eight. Please read it, share it. So let's talk about the housing market in Canada, Miss Watson. What's happening to uh, Canadian people in terms of housing uh, activities? So the housing market is a, on a little bit of, a, um, what should I say, a correction. We'll call it a correction. Because mm. even though for some people it may feel like a roller coaster, it actually isn't. It's just a correction. I think people were so used to having this housing market at, um, at such a crazy pace that they are like, some people are freaking out. But it is a little bit of a correction. Right now, houses are remaining on the market for a bit longer. And, you know, there are a couple of factors that are behind this. It's the interest rates, it's the war in Ukraine, it's the inflation rate, all of those things are playing a part in, in um, a little bit of slowdown. But really, it's a little bit of a correction was kind of what we needed. The only difference is because the interest rates are um, high, um, high right now. When I wouldn't say high because I still think they are very reasonable. But of course, when people are used to uh, a point seven and a point nine interest rate, you know, mm, um, yes. almost four percent seems high. Now, what um, what it is 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 when the interest rate had dropped, there's a, a stress test level that you had to qualify at. So you had to qualify two percent higher than whatever you qualified at. So if you qualified at like, you know, a point, point 0.9, you would have to be at a 2.9, um, you know, and then they would say, hey, this is what you can afford, right? But now because, uh, you know, the interest rates or the variable rates are like almost at four, people yes. have to qualify at six. And, um, you know, they have to qualify for the amount based on 6%, like 2% higher than the amount, right? And so what then happens is, uh, a lot of people are, you know, especially first time home buyers, which are, you know, my heart and soul, right? Like I love working with first time home buyers. It takes so much time and energy, but I love it. I love it mm -hmm. because I feel like, you know, um, they need someone who's vulnerable. They, they're so vulnerable. They need someone who's like ready to be patient with them, to teach them, to help them along the way and get them to home ownership. And I love I love working with first time home buyers, and um, and so I feel like a lot of first time home buyers are not being able to qualify, and oh, wow. are actually not able to get into the market because of this interest rate, and you know that's why a couple of months ago earlier I was telling people get qualified, get qualified because you know um, it's important that you get into the market because these are like it's important right that you. Um, get in and be able to yeah 
own a piece of property at least. Yes. But what's then happening is now those, uh, the ones that are not able to get into the market, they're now having to go into the rental market. And the rental market is seeing this huge surge with pricing. Yes. And it's almost like the reverse effect where the rental market is actually seeing multiple offers where uh, a few people are trying to get in and willing to pay higher than the amount. And so, you know, it's, it, it's a little bit of turmoil right now based on mm. that. However, yeah. you know, the next interest rate hike is actually um, middle of September sometime. And, you know, they are talking about another percentage, like we're not sure 0.5. Uh, what the bank, <laughs> but I think it'll be a whole percentage again. Oh. And I think, you know, they are, it will aggressively, Affect. two things are going to happen. Either the market is going to cool further and, or once that happens, people are going to suddenly realize this is the end of the hikes for the year and we'll start, you know, heading towards buying again. Right. Yes. Um, you know, uh, according to what I've read and according to what I've published so far, it looks like there'll be a further uh, drop. Um, you know, we're not seeing like crazy drop. price drops, but yes. we're seeing a little bit of, uh, um, what should I say, uh, a less. little bit of uh, less um, activity on how quick the housing is flying off the market. Uh, Ms. Watson, let's go back to what you said, like correction. What happened? Let's say compare our housing market in the 80s or 70s or whatever. What is the correction that they're doing, the, uh, what the government doing right now? Oh, so when I say housing correction, I just say that the the prices are just kind of correcting. Um, mm -hmm. The only thing the government is doing is, you know, uh, that that has an impact is, of course, you know, it's the Bank of Canada that has the impact on the re interest rate. But that's just because inflation is so high, right? Mm -hmm. And so therefore, interest rates will go up um, to curb inflation. Um, other than that, you know, there's there are a couple of things that, you know, um, some rules that have come into place, like for 2023, There'll be a ban on foreign buyers for two years. And uh, there are a couple of rules around, you know, first-time home buyers. Do you have a PR, you know, mm -hmm. or are you a Canadian? There's a whole bunch of rules around that piece. But, you know, it, it, this is what I say. Like, if, if people want uh, to know a little bit more about them and their, you know, um, uh, their situation, it's really hard to give you a cookie cutter approach, right? And so, yeah. you know, what I offer is a strategy call like for, to help people out. Um, of course, I, I work in Ontario, so, um, you know, I'm limiting uh, to people in, on Ontario. However, mm -hmm. if someone outside of Ontario wanted some help, I'm happy I'm to connect them you. with a good um, agent, yes. Oh, yes, I recommend Ms. Watson if you are, outside on top good and intelligent realtor thank you so uh, miss watson uh what as i uh, i always uh, ask what would you recommend to the people that the first time home buyer because this is your specialty what the first thing of the five things that a first time home buyer will do well, first, there are a couple of things that a home buyer should, a first time home buyer should be aware of. So first of all, is your credit score, right? Even mm -hmm. though the bank has their own uh, version of a credit score, it's the credit score p plays a, uh, an important role. The second part is clearing any debt that you may have, right? Even mm -hmm. though you may have good debt and bad debt, credit card debt is not good debt, mm -hmm. right? Like it's, <laughs> it's a very high debt. Um, <laughs> and you know, I'm kind of one of those people that I have a credit card, I use it for everything, but really at the end of the month, the bill needs to be paid. Yes. And if, if I can't afford to pay it, then I don't buy it, right? So that's yeah. kind of your mentality for a credit card. It should be, I'm gonna use it, I'm gonna collect my points and I'm going to pay the bill at the end of the month. And I think that's where people get stuck is, mm -hmm. is um, you know, trying when they pay 19% or 20 something, I don't know how much these interest oh rates God. are, it's crazy. Yeah. Yes. Right. So like those are, yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. It is yes. crazy. And then, you know, so making sure, you know, they have no, you know, credit card debt or paying down, you know, the highest interest debt first. So if you are stuck in a spot and you need to get 
out of it, then paying those debts first and, you know, finding someone that can genuinely help you with that piece to make you understand. Um, the other part is, um, you know, so you've got a little bit of debt, you want to save a little bit of money. It's okay to pick up a second, you know, a part-time gig, a part-time job. There's so many employees hiring right now, either yeah. for, you know, the holiday, upcoming holiday season, they'll be hiring again. So it's okay to pick up some extra hours somewhere and then just stash the cash, you know, just take that money and set it aside. Um, make your RSPs work if you're a first time home buyer, because the government is allowing you to have $35,000 of your RSP per mm. person uh, to be put towards your down payment, right? Yes. Um, or also making use of a TFSA. Um, because, yes. Yes. yeah, so those are some of the things I would suggest, but most importantly, you know, a credit, uh, you, you know, making sure your credit is good. Um, you know, you're earning, uh, obviously your earning has to be uh, a certain amount to get into the market. So those are important things um, to keep in mind. Yes. And, and one last thing is, you know, make sure, like I, I, one of the things that I tell people is that you're buying the biggest asset. It's not a car. Yes. You know, it is the biggest asset that you're going to buy. So why not buy it with someone who is, um, you know, who's going to have your interest in, in, in mind, who's not just looking to sell you something. You know, for me, I couldn't care less if you bought today. Mm -hmm. I know at some point you'll buy with me, right? So yeah. that person needs to have your best interest at heart, not, you know, for them to make money. That's not the, the point. We all need to make money to survive, absolutely. But that person needs to have your best interest at heart and you know, um, tell you the truth about stuff so that you can make an informed decision. That'd be awesome, Ms. Watson. So where do people reach you? So on Instagram, you can reach me, reach me at, at J. Watson Homes. Um, and that's... Um, I'm pretty, I, I respond uh, pretty uh, quick. And the other place you can also go to is uh, my website, www.chaplinwatson.ca. And you can fill out the connect with me uh, page. And uh, you know, that's one way. The it, website is pretty informative, um, uh, but on Instagram, I'm pretty active. So um, hopefully you'll, you'll join and, and connect with me there. Yes, let's connect Miss Watson, uh, more especially for the first time buyer. Miss Watson is uh, the person to call. Thank, Thank you, Miss Watson. Thank you so much. Have uh, a fabulous day. Have a fabulous day. Summer, summer, summer. More to come, people. See you soon. Bye.